So the very first thing I did in the functions and relations is I defined what a function was, and it was set off of the first set called the domain and the second set called the range. Well, we've clarified how to figure out whether something was a function or not, and so now we want to go into more detail about what the domain and what the range is. So my function is defined the exact same way here, but let me give some more details about domain. Well, in the first definition, we called it just the first set in our relationship between the first set and the second set. But now that we are graphing things in here, we know that we talk about these sets as ordered pairs. So we have them defined as x and y. Well, that means the first set are all the x values that apply in that function, meaning the horizontal values on a graph or left and right. And we can also define them as inputs in a function. And I'll talk about all of these in more detail. Well, that's the first set or the domain. The range is respectively going to do the same thing on the other side. It's going to be the y value or the vertical values, which we list from the bottom of the graph to the top of our graph, or the outputs of our functions. So we want to then identify what our domain and our range is given certain criteria. So let's jump right into one of those examples. In these examples here, they've given us graphs. We have two of them. And we want to find the domain and the range. Well, domain we have identified as the x values or the horizontal values on the graph. So left to the right. And the range we have identified as the y values or the vertical values on the graph, which goes from the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph. We always want to list them smallest to largest. So with that information, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with the domain and the range of each of these graphs or each of these examples here. Okay, in the first one, our notation is going to look a little bit different than in our second one because our first graph has points or ordered pairs only. So our domain in our graph there is only going to be the very specific x values listed. So I'm going to list them in set notation because they are a set, and I'm going to list them in numerical order with no repeats, just like we did back in the first video. So my smallest x value is negative 4. My next smallest is negative 1, and then 0, and then 2, and then 5. So we basically just list each x value where we have an ordered pair or a point. We're going to do the exact same thing for the range, but note that the range goes by y values. So our smallest y value is negative 3. The next smallest is 1, and then 3. And then we actually have two of them over here, but both of those fall on the y value of 4. So notice we only list that y value once because we don't list any repeats under domain and range. Now, this still is identified as a function. We can have repeated range values, but we cannot have repeated domain values. So therefore, we have found the domain and the range of example one. Now, the domain and range of example two is going to be different because I don't have individual ordered pairs. I have a whole series of ordered pairs. So again, the domain is identified as the x values or horizontal or left and right values on the graph. So we want to start from our very most left value on the graph, which is this guy here, negative 4. And we want to consider what all x values are part of this graph. Well, I don't have any x values over here on the left, so that's why we start at negative 4. And we see that we have x values all the way through this here, meaning everything's covered from here to here. And my largest x value that's on this graph is positive 4. 
So if I wanted to list this in interval notation, my smallest value is negative 4, and my largest value is positive 4, meaning this x value to this x value is part of the graph. But now we have to fill in our endpoints of interval notation. Well, since this is an actual point or a closed circle, that means we have a closed point on the left-hand part of our graph, so we do a bracket. Since this over here is not a defined point, it is actually an open circle, that means we do an open part of the graph on the right. So this means that every x value between negative 4 and positive 4 is included on this graph. And that specifically includes the endpoint on the left, but not the endpoint on the right. Now, this is an interval notation, but you could have also done this in set builder notation. So the set of x is such that, and since I'm between two values, my x is between and including my negative 4 on the left, and between but not including my positive 4 on the right. So either one of the notations is fine. Just be very careful of what the homework specifically asks for. Okay, now we need to do the exact same thing with our y values. So we need to start with the lowest y value on the graph, which is actually this point right here. And we need to consider what's my highest y value on the graph, and that's this point right here. Now, I do see other points identified in between. Even though they are specifically denoted as ordered pairs there, I can actually list many ordered pairs all the way through this graph here. We're specifically looking from the lowest to the highest. So my lowest y value is negative 5, and my highest y value is positive 4. Now, whether we include them or not, at negative 5, we do have a defined point there, so that is a closed bracket. And at positive 4 up here, we do have an open circle, so it is not defined, so we have an open circle there. So basically that means all of my y values are this part here, including my negative 5, but not including my 4. So that's how these intervals work between domain and range. And if I got rid of all of these extra markings here on my graph, it might make it a little more clear as to what we're actually trying to do. Okay, if we wanted to list our range in set builder notation, it would be the set of y's here. So that's a little bit different than what we're used to. The set of y's such that my y value is between and including my endpoint at the bottom of negative 5 and between but not including my y value of 4 up top. All right, now that we've hopefully clarified domain and range, let's actually do one more example of this. And this example does not give us the graph, but it gives us the function, and it asks us to use our graphing calculator to help us identify the domain and range. So let's pull that calculator up here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to substitute this in for our y equals. So y equals, and then 5 plus, 2x squared minus x to the fourth power. And I'm going to go ahead and graph this on my standard window. Zoom 6 for the standard. So that gives us this graph here. We want to identify the domain and the range. So remember, domain is the possible x values on this graph, and range is the possible y values on the graph. So the first thing that we want to focus on is our domain, or our x values. So we want to figure out where does this graph have any x values listed. Well, if I start at the center and start moving myself to the left, so notice when I trace my graph, 
it keeps going left and left and left and left. Now, it might look like it stops here, but that's just because my window stops there. This graph is going to go forever in this direction. So it actually is going to keep going more left and more left and more left and more left, very slowly, but it will actually go left forever. If I do the same thing on my right-hand side of my graph and I trace this more right, 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 remember we're talking about domains, we're talking about right and left parts of the graph. So if I trace this, this is going to go more right, 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 slowly but surely, forever on the right-hand side of the graph. So this graph is actually going to go all the way from the left-hand side forever to the right-hand side forever. So that means our domain on this graph goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And that lists it in interval notation. Okay, let's talk about range then. Range talks about the up and down values. The y values are the vertical values on the graph. Now, we already said that this graph goes down forever, so if I wanted to talk about the bottom portion of my graph, it never ends. So my smallest y value that's listed here is negative infinity. So that's where my interval notation starts. But we notice that my y value never goes above this point here. So that is my largest y value where my range is going to end. So we need to figure out specifically what is our highest y value on this graph. And I'm going to use that using the maximum feature on our graphing calculator. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to use our calculator to find the highest point on this graph, and that is called a maximum. So we do that underneath the calculate feature of the graph. So we do second, calculate, and then we see use option for maximum. Now, if this graph was upside down, you would have a low point, so you would use option number three, minimum, instead. But here we have a high point, so we're going to use option for maximum. Now, it looks like both of these points are at the same place. It looks like these points have the y value of 6, but you never know for sure, and that's why I always suggest to use the maximum or minimum feature on your calculator to double check. Your calculator tries to tell you through it, so it tells you left bound. I'm going to try and find the maximum of this point here, so I'm going to go somewhere left of that point there. So I'm going to hit my left arrow until I'm confident that I'm left of that point. I hit enter, and it creates a left triangle here, as well as a left out of line to say this is the very smallest place where my maximum could be. Now, it tells me right bound, so I go right of where I think my maximum is. I'm going to hit enter. Again, it creates the triangle and the dotted line to tell me this is the very right that our maximum could be. So my maximum is going to be in between these two arrows or in between these two dotted lines. Now it says guess, so we want to guess where we think the maximum is. So I think my maximum is at this value right here. So I go there and I hit enter. And it tells me my maximum is at the point negative 1, so we were correct in guessing the y value. Now, sometimes the calculator does some weird rounding error, so even though it might list all these zeros and then a 1 at the end, just note that you need to interpret that at negative 1, 6. So if I were to actually draw this by hand over here, that tells me I have an ordered pair at negative 1, 6. And I would do the same thing over here on this point over here to confirm that it has the same y value. So let me go through that very quickly. Second calc, option for maximum, because I have a high point. It says left bound, so I go somewhere left of my maximum. Right bound, so I go somewhere right of my maximum. Hit enter. And guess, so I go where I think my maximum is and hit enter. And it is the same. Again, ignore the rounding error, and I have a maximum of the point 1, 6. I also have a y-intercept at 5, 
And then we can guesstimate that we have x intercepts almost to negative 2 and almost to positive 2. So our graph would look like this if we were to graph it by hand. So we already said our lowest y value or our lowest range value is negative infinity. Our highest y value then is this value right here, which we use the calculator to find that that y value is 6. So therefore, our range goes from the smallest of negative infinity up to the largest of 6. Now, there were points at our 6 value. They were defined there. So we would do a closed bracket around 6. Just remember that your domain always goes from the smallest x value to the largest x value, left to right. And your range always goes from the smallest y value to the largest y value bottom to top. Now, I've done these in interval notation. If you would rather do them in set builder notation, that is perfectly fine too. Just make sure you do whatever the homework specifically asks you for. So that is how you find domain and range visually by looking at the graph. And in the next video, we'll figure out how to do it when they don't give you a graph. They give you a function instead.